molecule or the MHC2 molecule? Or an antigen presenting cell? Two. And two. Okay. So let's go back to a virus. And let's say that this cell. What was the question? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. The role of an antigen presenting cell highlights MHC1 or MHC2. Antigen presenting cells are the only cells that have MHC2. So we have a virus that is attacking the body, and our macrophage, our dendrite, engulfs that via phagocytosis. And as we saw before break, this is going to be fragmented by interaction with lysosomal enzymes. And we're going to end up with viral peptides. Those viral peptides will interact with or bind to an MHC2 molecule. And that MHC2 molecule will be inserted into the plasma membrane. Actually, let me do it a little bit lower here. So think about my finished product. This is MHC2 with an exogenous peptide, right? Right, it came from outside the cell. So it's phagocytosis. There wasn't a protein that the cell made for the virus. So now, is this going to interact with a T helper or a T killer cell? It's an MHC2 molecule. T helper cell. So T helper cells, all of our T cells and B cells, have on their surface receptors. And the receptors on the T cells are very similar to antibodies, and on the B cells, they are antibodies. All right. So on the, uh, an antibody is formed of, we'll look at this tomorrow, is formed of two long chains and two short chains. The T cell receptor looks similar to that, but in just two long chains. So this is identified as a TCR, or T cell receptor. Like an antibody, these ends are the specific. They, they're what's going to recognize the antigen or the epitope of the antigen. So on our T helper cell, we have T cell receptors that on this particular cell are unique to this viral epitope, the antigenic determinant on this uh, molecule right here. So, not only do they recognize the MHC2, but they will only bind with its MHC2 with that particular exogenous peptide. So by chance, they just randomly happen to bump into this. We have our T cell receptor interacting with the MHC2 molecule. This is a naive or an inactive T helper cell at this point. With this interaction, remember, it's stabilized by the CD4 molecule. With that interaction, the macrophage undergoes changes, and it starts making chemicals that go back to and activate the start to activate the T helper cell. Additional molecules are involved. Known as B7 and CD28. And all of this 
always helps to turn on the macrophage or dendrite, if you will, and it starts to make chemicals and release them. And they go to and bind to receptors that appear because of this activation. These receptors appear on the T helper cell. This particular type of chemical is a communication between two white blood cells. And so as a group, it's classified as an interleukin molecule, and more specifically as interleukin-1. So it's made by the macrophage of the dendrite and is released after this whole interaction occurs. The dots are the interleukin-1. They bind to interleukin-1 receptors on the T helper cell and have two effects. So the binding of interleukin-1 results in proliferation, mitosis, cloning, if you will, of this particular T helper cell. It also results in the T helper cell being activated. And it secretes its own interleukins. Known as interleukin 2. We'll talk about what interleukin 2 does. In addition, it makes an interferon. known as gamma interferon. I'm going to have to put these in different colors, interferon. And the gamma interferon goes back to the macrophage, if this is a macrophage and not a dendritic cell, and makes it a super killing machine. It makes it even more active as a phagocytic cell. Okay, so there's this co-stimulation occurring between them. So the macrophage or dendritic cell activates the T helper cell, and the T helper cell activates the macrophage and makes it even more active. We're halfway there. So we've got our T helper cell active. Now the T helper cell is going to activate T killer cells. Our naive T killer cell isn't doing anything, all right? It hasn't interacted yet. It also has specific T cell receptors. And here's what took me, and I know if they're not completely clear on this, so I don't know if your microbiology class covers this, because it wasn't very well explained in diagrams. I had to go search the material. But antigen-presenting cells like macrophages and dendritic cells can also have on their cell surface An MHC has one molecule producing an endogenous peptide that is the same as that one. I'm like, wait a minute. That's not what antigen presenting cells do. This is not a virally infected macrophage. It's ingesting the viruses. So how in the world did it get an MHC1 endogenous peptide molecule? Well, I did get a really good answer. There were some possibilities that were provided. And one possibility was that the same macrophage ingested a cell that had been infected by a virus and, pro and produced, as we saw earlier, so it's going to have the virus in it already. And as such, it's going to have MHC1 molecules that have that viral endogenous peptide. And the macrophage ingests that and takes those MHC1 molecules and puts it on its own cell surface. Okay? So the macrophage didn't make those. It got them from another cell. Yeah. So this was made by another cell the same way that we saw MHC1 molecules made. 
via the virus co-opting that cell and making its own viral protein. I don't know who to answer first, so. Uh, are the blue dots on top the interim? Yes, uh, I'm sorry. The, this, this would be the gamma interferon. And that's secreted by the? It's made by the T cell and makes the macrophage more active. A T cell interacts with our MHC1 complex? The T killer cell. Which is how, why I had to give myself some more room here. So this is a T killer cell. And as such, it's going to have T cell receptors on it that not only recognize the same viral fragment, but instead of recognizing MHC2, it recognizes MHC1. So this T killer cell would not bind to this molecule. Okay, only a T helper cell will bind to the MHC2. The T killer cell recognizes the foreign viral protein and the MHC class 1 and is bound to that one. It's going to be stabilized by what molecule? CD8. 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 Yeah. It also gets interleukin, not from the macrophage, but it's going to get interleukin-2 from the T helper cell. The T helper cell has to be activated first because that's what turns on the T killer cell. Are these interleukin-2. So the only reason both of these can bind to the macrophage is because the macrophage has internalized a cell that already had the MHC1 viral peptides, which makes sense. It's in the area of a virally infected cell. Yes? Interleukin 2 comes from the TLP. Yes. So interleukin 1 comes from the macrophage. Remember I said to, you might get a matching area where I ask you to match cells to their secretion? So basophils and mast cells make histamine. Plasma cells make antibodies. Macrophages and dendritic cells make interleukin 1. T helper cells make interleukin 2, in this situation anyway. We're two-thirds of the way there, okay? So now we have our T helper cell is activated. That was this process here, so macrophage releases interleukin 1, cell is activated. Then we have our T killer cell activated. So this is kind of what I've shown on the diagram up there with the T helper cell. So here we have the macrophage MHC2, the T helper cell receptor binding CD4, all right, interleukin 1 made by the macrophage and activating the T helper cell. And Pardon? The B7 and C20, C20, does that have a combination complex name or something? Else? No, it's just called code simulation. Those appear after the interaction between the receptor and the MHC. So it just further provides that activation. I don't want to look at that slide. Yeah, it was an evil slide. Um, so then this is what we just got to be talking about was the T killer cell activation. So the T helper cell is to create interleukin 2. And that binds to the T killer cell. Oh, for here. T cells. Okay. okay. So that's what we're going to get to next. So you're saying gamma interferon? So now we actually have the, we're ready for the killing zone. Okay. So I'm going to leave this half of the diagram still on the board. However, may I erase these words here? Yes. The diagrams, because I need to put my killing cell over here. Okay. Okay, so basophils was histamine. Once this happens.
happens? The T helper cell and the T killer cell can separate from the antigen presenting cell. The T helper cell is undergoing mitosis. It can go on to activate B cells or other T killer cells. So we'll let it go off and reproduce and multiply and have fun. The T killer cell can also reproduce. All right, so we're going to take one of those T killer cells and it's going to find itself a virally infected cell. So here is a body cell, just, you know, an epithelial cell or whatever. This is just a body cell that has been infected with viruses. <laughs> And those viruses have taken over its protein synthesis and they're making new viral proteins. So those are endogenous peptides now, right? Because the cell is making the viral proteins for the virus to make new virus coats. But as far as the cell is concerned, it doesn't know the difference. So they bind to MHC1 complexes on the surface of this cell just like any other endogenous protein would, that this cell would make. So this is going to be MHC class 1. And it's going to have what it thinks is an endogenous peptide because the cell made those viral proteins. So which of these two cells is going to recognize that MHC class 1 molecule? My T helper cell that's active or my T killer cell that's active? The T killer cell. So my active T killer cell now, one of them, recognizes that MHC class 1 molecule just like it did on the macrophage when it wasn't active. binds to that with CD8, and now the killer cell is going to release molecules while it's attached to this body cell to kill it. Two types of molecules are, re are the primary ones that are released. One inserts little donut holes, similar to the MAC attack, and these molecules are identified as Perforant, perforant. Just they do just what their name says. They perforate the cell membrane. So if we look at this image here, they're putting these little holes in the cell. And two things can happen. A bunch of water can flood into the cell and cause it to rupture. Just like our MAC attack complex, our membrane attack complex. Or the other type of chemical that is produced is called a granzyme, granulated enzyme, and those also will enter into the cell and will cause the cell to commit suicide. So if it doesn't rupture, it's going to commit suicide. So they result in apoptosis. The perforant does what its name says, it perforates the cell. So it's going to bind to that cell and kill it. T killer cells. Uh-huh. The T killer cell is going to make both of them. And then it will, once it kills that cell, it can separate from it and go to another viral infected cell and do the same thing. Granzyme. I decide that's what I'm going to have my grandkids call me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's your extra credit for our test. I will diagram it for you and ask you to name the cells and the molecules. So is this interleukin-1, or is it interleukin-2, or is it a T helper cell, is it MHC-1 or MHC-2? I learned not to have you guys diagram for me. 
I spent all my time trying to interpret the diagram. All right, so I will have a diagram and have you label the parts. Uh, the, the red dots are the enzymes going into the cell. Uh, into the body. They weren't going away. Sorry. Into the body cells. Yeah, into the body cells. Is that better? Yeah. I know which direction. Sorry. I was trying to find that one. Maybe start the arrow off. Yes. So the body cell replicated the virus, and that's why it's being recognized by yes. the people. Because it, the virus, took over the body cell's DNA, and the body didn't know the difference, the body cell didn't know the difference, so it started making viral proteins. Because the body was, because the cell was making the proteins, they were treated as endogenous peptides. So that's why they bind to the NHC1. Oh, sure. Okay, I got this wrong. I think your video is going to be watched a lot, guys. Got a quick view of chat real fast. I'm just going to end it.